Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about a topic which is very close to me, as well as in most of my mentoring session, I got this question. The question is TSA for JavaScript developers. It's not a question, but a topic. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about is TSA is important for front-end developer or not. It is more about my experience, my, my journey. And also if it is important, then from where we can learn it and resources basically, and how, how it should be. There are a lot of roadmaps available for sure, but how to follow that roadmap, how to practice, how to revise and all that. Disclaimer, if you are someone who is into JavaScript or front-end developer, never did DSA, then this video will be relevant for you. But if you already know DSA, this video is not for you. Also, whatever I'm gonna share in this video is from my own experience that how I actually did it. Because I was the one who was uh, against of DSA to be asked to a front-end developer. But today I can uh, understand that why the, the companies are asking. And instead of looking as a DSA as an interviewing clearing skill, it is more about your programming skill. So this is what I'm gonna cover in this video. So first I will talk about my background. I have 10 years of more than 10 years of experience. I worked as a front end developer throughout my career. JavaScript is my primary skill. When I started my career, there used to be no DS around. It used to be very uh, relevant to our day to day work. Uh, they used to give us the exercises, the designs of the web uh, websites and we need to code that, make it pixel perfect, cross browser supported, backend integration and all that. <clears throat> But from last few years, we have seen that it has been changed. Now, when in last few years, when uh, I used to get interview calls and HR used to tell me there would be a DSA round because I was an experienced developer, I used to tell them, uh, I am not comfortable. Are you fine uh, in skipping that round? Few of the company used to say that it is non-negotiable round. So I have to say that, sorry, I'm not the right person then. But there are a few companies who used to say, okay, we will skip it for you, but you have to be the best in your craft. And when I used to sit in the interview of those companies, what they used to do in the interview round, instead of asking direct DSA question, they used to ask indirect DSA question. Example, given two DOMs and a tag, you need to search the tag in DOM A and DOM B. And then there would be like follow-up questions. Now in the first quote, it sounds like a <clears throat> front-end problem. But in reality, it is a, a DSA problem. So if you are, if you doesn't know DSA, you might not be able to give the right uh, answer, optimize answer or optimize code. So after a few such incident, I decided to go ahead and start picking DSA. Why? Because I was losing good opportunities, and I can see the uh, I can I, I was able to see that as we will move ahead with the time. Uh, DSA round will become one of the non-negotiable and the most important round and that we can see right now. Most of the company ask you DSA for sure. So DSA <coughs> system design round is always, always there. So then what I did is I searched for the resources DSA for JavaScript developers. There were not much resources at that time. Most of the resources were with Java, Python, C, C++. There was a time when I started learning DSA with Python, but then I realized I have to learn Python also and I was not ready for that. So there were so many times when I started and stopped, started and stopped because I was not getting the right resource. And because I never did DSA before in my life, I was struggling more. So then on Udemy, I found a course. I don't remember the name, but I will put it in the comment section or description box. That course was about <coughs> DSA or problem solving for JavaScript developers. I picked that course and it was a very good course because it helped me in understanding how to approach the problems, how to do it, how to give the answers, how to explain everything. And that course become my Kickstarter course. When I started that course, at that time, every problem in that course used to be like a big hard problem to me, but now it's very easy for me. So you can see the progress. I, I, I myself can able to see that progress that when I first time touch that course and their problems and versus right now, I'm very comfortable. But after doing that course, again, I wanted to get more in more into the DSA. Again, it's the same problem, no resources. 
So what I did <clears throat> when I started doing my masters, they actually assigned a book to us, which I think most of the developers now know, which is I will just type here introduction to algorithms. This particular book is very famous. And this is a book which actually changed everything for me. So what I did is I started reading this book. Now, the thing is, uh, reading this book was not easy. It's a very heavy book I have right now with me. Uh, it's a very big book, very, very thick. And uh, if you are someone who hasn't touched, who haven't touched the book for many years, it would be very hard. First day, I still remember when first day I opened this book, I was not able to read more than 10, 15 minutes. But what I did is I start keep pushing myself. Like I have to read, I have to read, I have to read. Now the first thing I understood about myself is I cannot directly jump into the problem solving. I need to understand the theory part. So now I will explain you how my process was. The first thing is theory was very important. I need to understand different data structure, different algorithms, um, how to find the time, basically big O and all those things. So theory was very important. So the first thing I did was spend time on this book to understand the theory part. Now, when well, while I was reading, I was also taking notes and instead of taking digital notes, I was taking notes on pen and paper. Now, this was very important for me. I'm that kind of a person you can say old school, but I love taking notes by my hand on paper because I remember <clears throat> I remember them uh, better as compared to typing on the computer. Now, the second thing what I did was when I was going through the DSA of this book, the good thing about this book is this book is not about any language. You are a JavaScript developer, you are Python, you are Go, C, C++, it doesn't matter. Anyone can pick this book and start learning. This book, I call it Bible of Algorithms or DSA. Now in this book, the good thing was pseudocode. So every data structure has few operations, which is non-negotiable. Everyone should know. Example, if it is a linked list, how you are going to create it, how you are going to add the value, how you are going to delete the value how you're going to update the value, how you're going to find that value and how you're going to basically find traverse your linked list. So these five operations are must. And then there would be as per the data structure. Example, linked list, then how you are going to reverse this linked list. But the five one are very important. So you should know the pseudo code of this. So when I started reading this book, with every data structure, they provide the pseudo code. Now, what is this pseudocode? The pseudocode is not based on any programming. Example, if I will ask you, add two numbers and the pseudocode would be uh, function add. You are not writing like proper JavaScript function or like that. Just you are writing add num1 equals to 2, num2 equals to 3, sum equals to num1 plus num2, return sum. That's it. So it is not JavaScript, it is not Python, it is not, it is just pseudocode. You are just writing that what you are going to do, how you are going to do that. So that pseudocode is very important. And for DSA, you should know pseudocode, that how you are going to do that. Many companies in interview ask only pseudocode. In fact, when you are working in your day-to-day -day life, no one is going to ask you to write the whole code in one meeting. They might just say, okay, let's discuss, you know, the pseudocode, how we are going to do that. I have done those meetings a lot of time. So pseudocode, this book actually helped me to understand writing that pseudocode and getting the confidence. And as you can relate, as I told you, I have done such meetings where in technical meetings, we are discussing the pseudocode also. So it's a good skill. And again, want to highlight that it is helping to improve my day-to-day -day programming skills, and pro uh, which is very essential for my day-to-day -day job. <clears throat> so once I'm done with the pseudocode on pen and on paper, I used to convert that pseudocode to code on paper only why on paper now when you are going for the interview of dsa in the top companies google facebook amazon they don't give you the code editor like vs code where the code highlighting code uh, hinting is enabled they will give you a, a word doc kind of editor where you have to write everything so you need to be very good in your craft it's not like that they are challenging you 
they are the top companies who are building the great products and they are looking for the sharpest mind so you need to be very good in your craft so that's why they are giving you a editor where you don't have any hinting or any highlighting now how you can get confident in that you can start by writing on the paper the code so i used to convert the pseudo code into the code of javascript through on paper only now because i have already written the pseudo code converting that to javascript would be very easy example let's go back to the same one adding two numbers if i have given you this num equals to 1 num 2 equals to 5 sum equals to num 1 plus num 2 you can easily convert into the javascript or c++ or java or python it doesn't matter because now you have the blueprint of your code uh, logic you can easily convert that to your code so that's why pseudo code is very important so i used to convert pseudo code to my javascript on paper i used to take the test data and run that test data on the program i have wrote to see that if the execution is flowing as expected or not i will find some gaps i will fix it and once i am happy then i will type it on the my code editor to run and see if i was i was right or not obviously in first go everything is not going will not go perfect and with time and i am not i am not worrying about the time and you should not also the reason is this is your first time first you need to solve the problems get confident with the process and then start thinking about optimizing the time so what i did is when i first time started doing this on the first day i just took the time and after 2 to 3 months i compare my time there was a huge difference so when you are learning something don't bother about the time so pseudo code convert to the javascript code and then go to the editor and type the whole program this is how you will be able to get more and more confident in your problem solving and programming skills now after few few months or weeks what happened is when i used to write the code on the paper i can very easily highlight the problems i used to look at the code and i can highlight where are the problems are happening where are the gaps and all that so this actually helped me a lot and i have seen in few of my interviews also at that time which i was giving i was getting more and more comfortable with machine coding because i used to i was very habitual of writing the code on the paper by my uh, pencil or pen so that also helped my brain to be very comfortable with writing the code anywhere now how much time it all take it took not like a month because i have a full time job and i am not a very super intelligent person i believe i am a average and a slow learner it took me months and i was having a full time job so what i used to do is i used to every morning for an hour i used to sit and devote time for this i used to tweet about this if you are on twitter following me you must have seen i used to uh, take the picture of how i am learning what i have learned and everything so this is how i used to do it now once i am done with this i like not everything like i am done with link list now how i used to practice for practice i didn't bought lead code i already spent lot of money on paid resources unfortunately i was not able to follow them and it used to be very overwhelming for me so what i used to do is i used to go on the google search for like 10 link link list medium problem and i used to just pick 10 or 20 and start solving that and you can see if i got stuck somewhere the good thing is these websites also provide you solution if i am not able to understand by reading then i used to search on youtube and now we have chat gpt also so take i used to take help of now i take help of that uh, there are a lot of communities there are a lot of groups there are a lot of mentors who are ready to help you out i joined few but for me again it was like i was not able to devote much time there it was overwhelming and i wanted to learn it on my own pace so i was not the i actually stopped being part of that but if you are someone who needs like a group study kind of environment then trust me there are a lot of good communities out there who will support you so i will summarize what i did i started with this i spent good amount of time to understand the pseudo code i used to go with every data structure i started writing the pseudo code of the five top operation of every data structure then used to convert that into javascript code and then used to go and type on my editor 
same I used to do once I'm done with the pseudo code of these operation. I used to search for the problems and used to do the same process pseudo code uh, program on my paper JavaScript take the test data execute everything is fine I'm happy then go on code editor type it to just to get uh, it is working or not working and what I used to started doing is I started also uh, talking to the other people that how they are doing so one of the course I got like from a lot of people it was I think this one this is the one of the reference I got yeah uh, this website I got from different different resources this is DSA in JavaScript and a lot of people told me that this is pretty good so if you are someone who wants to go ahead with video course or something please go ahead this is also very good but at the end I want to say you have to give yourself and this learning process time uh, again I'm not challenging anyone might be you will be able to do it in one month if you will sit for eight to ten hours but even if you are someone like me who has a full-time job who is starting it for first time and a slow learner uh, and want to learn everything in own, uh, own pace then please give yourself at least uh, three or six months I would say it's an ongoing process I'm still learning it please give yourself some time and now after learning all this today I'm very confident about my problem solving about my uh, programming skills I feel I'm more comfortable in writing the code machine doing machine round codes so please give it a try I'm still learning it I hope it will help you uh, in some way uh, again going back to this book um, I actually uh, went ahead with this book uh, the reason is because my university actually assigned to me but now I see the value of it this is pretty expensive uh, if you are not into the physical book you can have the PDF books also a lot of free PDFs are also available so you can go ahead and with it read it one trick I want to share with you that I didn't start it with chapter one because I got assigned this book through my university so in my university they gave us the only few few topics so the strategy was to you know just go with the first uh, few data first with the <coughs> uh, big O that how you are gonna calculate uh, what are the algorithms what is the pseudo code and then it was about grouping the same data structure together like array queue and uh, linked list were uh, uh, in in one group and then they would like grouping of the different data structure so instead of reading from chapter one you can just look at the content and you can decide from which data structure you want to start if you are just starting as a fresher you have no idea please see how you are gonna calculate the time complexity and space complexity this should be the first thing you should be learning and be very comfortable in doing that uh, in this book it is already given if you will go on youtube and search you will get ample resource for that also but that should be your first uh, place from where you should be starting cool i hope this video was helpful for you let me know if you have anything to add in this video any your tips suggestions any resources it would be great not just for me for other folks also so thank you so much. Take care. Bye.